Hey, 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 does this question look familiar? So I've been getting a lot of comments today of people saying how this question nine from the 2022 paper one maths exam that you guys wrote um, has was very difficult for a lot of people. So I'm gonna go through the question with you guys now. What's actually quite interesting is that this question, a similar question was asked in 2017's November paper. Check this out. This is the paper from 2017. We have an equation of y equals to x squared plus two. In, quest in, in this year's paper, they just used x squared. Then they gave us a point, zero and three. Uh, wrong way. <laughs> in this one, they give us the point 10 and 2, and then they ask us for the minimum distance in the question paper in 2017. They say calculate the distance between Benny when the car is closest to Benny. So that's also a minimum question. So if any one of you went over the 2017 exam paper, you would have enjoyed today's question 9. Well, I'm not going to say today because not everyone watching this is watching it now or when I'm recording this of course so let's let me show you what to do here so what we have is we have some type of graph now it's not that important that you know what the graph looks like but I mean I'll just draw it anyways it's a parabola a very basic looking parabola which just goes like that okay and we have this point 10 and 2 now the point 10 and 2 would be somewhere over here how do I know that it's not there? Well, if you had to plug 10 into this equation, um, the y value would be 100. So that would be like um, way up, well, well, how can I say this? Um, yeah, uh, uh, how do I say that nicely? So so, so yeah, the, the a 10 and 100 would be somewhere way up here. So the point's gonna be somewhere over there, um, but that's not even that important. Now, what they say is they say, determine the minimum distance between the point and a point on F. So we don't know where the point on F is. Maybe it's over here, okay? And what we'll do is we'll just call it X and Y. Now they've asked us to calculate the minimum distance, so we'll just go get the distance formula um, and we'll make a formula. So I'll use this as my point number two. It doesn't matter, you can do it the other way and I'll use that as my point number one. And then I'm just gonna say that the distance is gonna be equal to, and then I'm gonna say uh, 10 minus x squared plus two minus y squared. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is, you know when we do optimization in calculus, um, we're not allowed to have two different variables. We need to get rid of one of them. Now some of you might be like, now how the heck are we gonna do that? Well, it's quite easy. Um, what we do, um, and I'm sorry I'm saying it's easy, I'm being like that like guy after the test who's like, oh no dude, it was so easy. I'm not saying it like that. Um, I'm sorry. So what we'll do is we know that this is an equation over here and I'm just gonna write it as y equals to x squared. And so that is the, literally the equation that we'll use. By now some of you are probably like, oh, why didn't I see that in the test? So we have 10 minus x squared plus two minus x squared to the power of two. Okay, now I'm just gonna go neaten everything up inside that square root. And so if you had to multiply the brackets out, you're gonna get 100 minus 20x plus x squared, um, plus four minus four x squared, plus x to the power of four. Um, just wanna make sure, four minus four x squared plus x to the power of four. Yes, now here, listen up, ladies and gentlemen. This is the part that would have confused people because you guys know what to do. You guys are like, oh yeah, dude, I'm just gonna take the first derivative now. Um, I just need to take the first derivative because that's how we find minimums and maximums. And you are correct, but what many of you might have sat with in this exam is how do we find the first derivative when you've got a square root? And a lot of you, I know you guys would have done this, you would have put like a power of half and then you would have been like, bro, like, stuff's not working, suddenly you're feeling a bit more sweaty, and I know, hey, I can imagine what would have happened, but here's the little trick. It's a little mathematical trick. Um, you might have to just give this some thought. We cannot take the square root. We cannot use the square root. So what we do is we rather go back to the distance squared, okay? So we're gonna square the distance, okay? And we're just gonna be left with 100 minus 20x. Actually, I'm just gonna neaten this all up quickly. I'm just gonna put everything together. So it's gonna give us x to the power of four. So I'm taking the square, I just took the square root away. And then the x squares would give us negative three x squared um, minus 20x plus 100 and, 
for. Now here's the key. You don't have to take the first derivative of the distance to find out the minimum distance. You can actually just take the first derivative of the distance squared because it will still give us the same place. If you minimize d, that is the same place where you would also minimize d squared. Okay, for example, if the minimum, uh, yeah, I don't wanna go too much into that because that, you might just have to think about that by yourself. But if you, fi if you find the place where the D is a minimum, like if you find the X and Y where the D is a minimum, that will also be the X and Y where the D squared is a minimum, okay? That's the part that's a little bit interesting here, that when you, you can, min you can minimize D, but you can also minimize D squared and it will be the exact same area, okay? So I don't have to go take the first derivative um, of this part. I can actually just go take the first derivative of this part. So um, I'm gonna use the correct notation. So we're gonna take the derivative. So it's the derivative of d squared, okay, over the variable x. If you did this in the test, um, to the power, like with a little one over there to show that you're taking the first derivative, um, they might accept that as well. Or maybe you could have done it like this, d2 with a little line over there. Okay, so we're gonna take the first derivative of that and that's gonna give us 4x3 minus 6x minus 20. All right, and now we know that if you wanna find the minimum, you have to make that equal to zero. So you have to make your first derivative equal to zero. So we're gonna say, um, zero is equal to four, actually let me write this somewhere else. I'm gonna take it up here now. So we're gonna say zero is equal to four x cubed minus six x minus 20. And now suddenly we have to do the whole cubic, how to find the x values of a cubic graph. Now this is where some of you would use synthetic division um, and all of those types of things. But if you've ever watched my videos, then I usually don't use synthetic division. What I like to do is I like to, um, you keep plugging in x values until you keep plugging x values into here until you end up with a zero. So you might try x equals to one, and if you try x equals to one, then you're gonna end up getting um, four minus six, you're gonna end up getting like minus 22, I think. Yeah, so that doesn't work. Then if you try x equals to two, then you actually end up getting a zero. If you plug a two into all of the x values, you end up getting a zero. And so, um, so if you've watched those videos on how to do that, then you would know that we can now make a bracket and, you, and you'd be left with x minus two. And then we'd be left with a x squared. It's that stuff, it's this stuff. Hey guys, I hope, I hope this is making sense now. I know a lot of you watching this right now might feel a little frustrated. Um, it's normal, I've, I remember coming out of my own exams and it can be a bit irritating. Okay, now we gotta do that whole method where you gotta try to find the value of a, b, and c, okay? And so everyone has their own way of doing this, but if you look here, the x cubes, they must eventually add up to four. So that means that this a value is a four, and then if you had to multiply these two together, it should give you negative 20. So that means that this part here would be positive 10. And then we need to find the b value, and that's usually the one that learners struggle with. So what I've said in my previous videos on this is, um, ooh, what's, what am I doing? Sorry, um, so what, I, what I've said in previous videos is that you're either gonna try and make all the x's equal minus six, or normally we would look at the x squares, but there are no x squares, so we'll just leave that out. So we're gonna try and get the b value by looking at all of the x's, and we hope that all of the x's can be negative six. Um, so you're gonna say negative six equals, now where are we gonna get x's? Well, you're gonna get an x when you multiply this one and that one, so that's gonna give you 10 x, you can say x if you want, and then if you multiply this one and this one, so that's gonna give you minus two b. You might have your own way of getting this x, this b value, okay? Everyone, like there's lots of different ways. Now if I had to get x by itself, I mean b by itself, sorry, you end up with 16 like that, and then you just ignore the x's and you'd end up with b equals to eight. Okay, so b is gonna be eight, so I'll put that over there. All right. And then, okay, so now what we have is this. And now, this is the part where you would now have to try find all the other x values. So we already know this one is x equals to two, and then you could tr put this one in the quadratic formula. But what you would find is that when you try to solve this one in the quadratic formula, it actually gives you an error. 
So the only answer can only be that one. So x is equal to two. Now that's not the final answer, that's just the x value. So we know the x value um, at this point now, it's two. Now to find the y value, we can just use this equation over here. So the y value will be two to the power of two, which is four. So we've got that now. And now we can just go find the distance between uh, the two points because we now have all the coordinates. We didn't even have to find the y value to be honest because we can actually just go plug the x value into here. Or if you want to, you can just use the distance formula between the two and the four and the 10 and the two. You can do whatever you want at this point. Um, but if we have to go work that out, I'm just gonna plug it into here. So x is two. And if you do this, you should get a final answer of two to the square root 17, but if we round that to two decimal places, then d would be equal to eight comma two five. Let me write that a little bit better, eight comma two five.